So you want to learn a little logic, the series part one. This is a series of screencasts for anyone who wants to learn a little logic, who wants to construct arguments on their own, and who wants to be able to distinguish a good argument from a bad argument. One of the privileges of being human, and one of the great distinctions between us and other animals, is the ability to reason. So the study of logic is nothing less than the study of what it means to be human. We employ some of the basic principles and practices of logic every day, but there is far more to it than most people recognize. Understanding logic and learning how to apply it to our own thinking and how we interact with the world is an eye-opening experience. In this series, we will be discussing logic, its principles and practices. In particular, we will be looking at what makes an argument a good argument and examining the building blocks which are available to us when constructing our own arguments. First, we'll address a couple of basic questions. What is logic and why study logic? What is logic? Logic, broadly speaking, is the study of argument. An argument is a form of discourse that contains some premises and a conclusion. It may also contain some reasoning that explains how the conclusion follows from the premises. Here is an example, by tradition, one of the first examples when you study logic. All humans are mortal. Socrates is a human. Therefore, Socrates is mortal. The first two sentences are premises, those statements which purportedly support the conclusion. And the third sentence is the conclusion, that statement which is purportedly supported by the premises. The basic idea that underpins good reasoning is that if the premises are true, then the conclusion cannot fail to be true. Why study logic? Well, we all have an intuitive sense of what logic is, and so you might wonder why we need to study it. Think about this, then. We all have an intuitive sense of how bodies move, and how reproduction works, and how people think. Does that mean we understand physics, biology, or psychology? That we should not study these subjects? In addition, because logic underpins reasoning, it underpins almost every area of human endeavor, including physics, biology, and psychology. People want and need to reason correctly, and the study of logic is what helps us distinguish good from bad reasoning. You might think that you already know how to reason correctly, and in large part you're probably right. The problem is that we often end up in situations where it is imperative that we reason correctly, but are unsure of how to do so. Or, we are confronted with issues or controversies that are clouded by poor reasoning that most people, even very intelligent people, do not see through because they are not trained to see an argument to its logical end. In this series, we will study how to reason correctly, in the general case, and in a way which will be applicable to the specific cases as well. We will look at the following topics. Natural language arguments, which for our purposes will be arguments in English. Argument forms, these are the patterns underlying natural language arguments. And natural deduction, a way to test for argument validity and to construct valid arguments. The balance of our series will study natural deduction, since that is the topic most important to reasoning as well. So that is what logic is and why one should study it.